Okay, so welcome to uh, today's sort of uh, supersized version of 100 Days to Greatness. We've got a lot of our 100 Days to Greatness people here, and we also have some other special uh, hometown folks that uh, we've invited to join in. What we're going to do today is talk uh, to at least one of our rising stars. We have another one scheduled. We'll see if he, he joins in. Uh, but we've got uh, Chris Zaldivar here, who um, is um, a guy who has done some things very well in the real estate business since he's been with Hometown Realty, and uh, and I thought might be um, a good person to ask some questions to. So I'm going to ask a couple questions, and then I'm going to turn it over to the crowd. And uh, so I think it'll be good. So Big Z, welcome. Thanks for being here. And why don't you start with telling us just a little bit about... Um, a little bit about you and how you got to here, and then we'll go with some questions. How about that? Shoot. Okay. Uh, hopefully, I won't go too long. But uh, so I'm actually originally from Silver Spring, Maryland, right, which is about two hours north of here. And I was in property management, and uh, I got a job with Ryan Homes in Richmond, which is great. However, I never sold a house with Ryan Homes, so then I got laid off, which is probably the best thing that ever happened to me. And <laughs> honestly, and then I was part of a different firm and then you recruited me coach, uh, Dean, excuse me, and, uh, was striving ever since. So that's pretty cool. Excellent. So how long have you been with hometown realty? Z? Five years. Very good. And how many, how many homes did you close last year? Uh, I can tell you it's over 20. Okay. Very good. Very good. What's your goal for this year? Uh, my goal for this year will be the same for the, uh, as last year, just because I hired a full-time assistant, Jen Pound, and Tate Morris as a new realtor. So it's awesome. So you're starting to build a team here, and uh, there's Sean. Good deal. And uh, so you're building a team? Yes. All right. So well, that's a good question. So when did you, when did you start thinking about that? As far as building a team, when did you when did you think that was the right time to do that? And then, and just sort of tell me how you, you the process to get to where you are right now. To uh, I think it kind of it kind of started a couple of years ago when I think I wanted a team, right? Just want to grow. I've seen other successful agents having a team, so why not me? However, I felt like I wasn't disciplined enough or getting enough business to do that. Uh, last year was probably the biggest one. Uh, 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 excuse me, last year was huge because last year I had about eight, I think I had about 10, 12 contracts at one time. And honestly, I was in the weeds. And the only thing I was doing was just putting out fires. And I was not doing anything real estate related to gain my business. And finally, when all that closed, I had to start all over again. So instead of me going through that, uh, you know, I went, got that quantum leap going. Good. Well, I think there's other folks on this on this uh, call or whatever you want to call them, this meeting that that might be in the same situation. You may get some questions about that. Um, I'm going to shift it over to Sean Gould, who's uh, at Carytown, who's just joined in. Sean is our other uh, sort of panelist here in the Rising Stars panel discussion here. So, Sean, thanks for being here. Tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, sort of your background, what brought you into being a, a real estate agent with Hometown Realty. Yeah, uh, thanks for letting me join on. Um, I, I appreciate it a whole lot. Um, so I, I worked in kind of the nonprofit world uh, with Young Life. That's kind of my connection with Hometown. I, I knew Tommy um, Sabiga kind of on the kind of periphery, just like we had similar circles. Um, I moved to Richmond in 2017, the summer of 2017. My wife and I moved, we didn't have jobs. We just kind of moved through a dart. We landed here and um, really I, I knew probably less than maybe 10 people in the greater Richmond area. I'm from Roanoke, my wife's Northern Virginia. So this is like kind of a new territory for us. But um, we, uh, we just kind of did some odds and ends while we, we kind, of, kind of figured out what direction we, we wanted to be going. Um, a buddy of mine asked, hey, man, have you ever thought about getting into real estate? I've got a, a friend from church uh, named Tommy that um, is uh, is in real estate, and he, he's thinking about um, starting his own, our own team. And I think he was with the Mike Chanel group at that time and then gave gave Mike, Mike the boot uh, and, uh, and, and started his own gig. But um, 
but yeah, I got coffee with, uh, I got coffee with Tommy actually literally like across the street, uh, from our Caritan office, a little coffee shop, sugar and twine. And, um, I was, you know, I had my, my legal pad and just rallying, rattling off questions and Tommy is stoic as Tommy can be, you know, just like given, given straight answers and kind of shoot me straight, which I appreciated. But, um, but that was my kind of initial touch with kind of the agent side of, of real estate was with Tommy, um, signed up to, you know, get, get the license, take the class through Mosley Flint and then the PSI and did all the exam work. So I, uh, I hit the ground running end of 20, 2017, uh, 2018 was kind of my first, first full year in it. Um, so that, that was kind of my intro on just kind of getting into the, getting into hometown, getting into the real estate world. Very good. So four years in the business, how many deals did you close last year? I closed 27 deals last year. Nice job. Yeah. 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 Good deal. So um, I'll, I'll ask one question to both yeah. of you and then we'll sort of turn it over. So, and yeah. maybe this is, maybe this is two questions wrapped in one. So first thing is, what was the hardest thing to get going? You know, what was the hardest thing you had to deal with to get going? And then, then what do you think the best thing, the best decision you've made up until now in your real estate business, what do you think that is? So uh, let's go back to Z. You can start that off. What, what was the hardest thing? And then what was the best decision you made? Uh, what's the hardest thing is honestly trying to be consistent is probably the most difficult thing uh, I would say with anything, uh, what you do, uh, just because, I mean, you get exhausted, right? You're doing, you're doing your notes, you're doing your calls, you're doing this consistent stuff. You may be doing it for four or six weeks and you're still not getting anything, right? But next thing you know it, you're done. You know, you haven't, you know, prospect for another three weeks, but next thing you know it, that six weeks you've been prospecting are now coming in. So that's great. But then next thing you know it though, when those are coming in, you took that three weeks off, you're going to notice a dip right in there. So it, that's, you have to be consistent on that. Right. So, so what you're saying, you, you work, you work hard. You don't, you don't see the results instantly. Then you might take some time off. The results come in from what you did before, but then once you do a few deals, then you look down the road, there's nothing there and you got to start over. That's right. Yeah. That's what, that's crazy. Um, so what about the best thing you've ever done? What, what's the smartest thing you've ever done? I think, that, I think this year, honestly, a few weeks ago, I hired Jen Pound, which is awesome. And then Tate Morris. I mean, Tate Morris is doing great. He already got two homes on the contract. I can't yeah. be more excited about it. Yeah. So, so just taking that leap and taking the leap of faith and saying, hey, you know what? I've got, I've got the skill set. I've got it. And maybe does the team, I, I said I was only going to ask two questions, but this is number three, bonus one for you, Z. Does the team already add accountability to your life oh already shoot uh yes i would have to say immediately when uh tate morris joined in and jen pound i mean i i feel like i'm i, I have a wife and kid at home right? right so i i already know i have to do that kind of support but now i have other support at work that i feel like i have to be accountable for and they're relying on me to make that happen mm -hmm. i believe that they may not say that but i feel that way Sure. And you feel like that's going to help what we, what we're just talking about with the consistency, right? Right. Oh, shoot. I mean, already I did already uh, 17 pop buys this week and within three days. I mean, I'm cranking it. <laughs> nice work. Nice work. Sean, same, same question for you. What was the hardest thing getting going? Well, I feel insecure now because I haven't done a single pop buy uh, this <laughs> week. So that's awesome. Um, <laughs> no, that's great, Chris. Um, Thanks, Sean. Yeah, dude. Um, that's really awesome. Um, I would, I would say that the best thing for me, um, yeah, you just gotta keep, you gotta keep moving your feet. And I think, I think Big Z was mentioning this, like you, you've got to be doing the things daily um, to, you gotta be planting the seeds, whether it's pop buys, whether it's the calls, the notes, wh wh whatever it might be for you. And everybody kind of has their flair and flavor in real estate, just the way they create, build their business. Um, which is why I also love real estate um, is because everybody kind of does it maybe a little differently, but you just got to keep doing those things. Um, you've got to do them consistently enough. Um, and then you've got to do them frequently enough. So you got to do the, the same stuff consistently and then on, often, you know, so it's like, okay, every day I'm doing X, Y, Z today, and then I'm going to do X, Y, Z tomorrow. 
um, because it really does build, I think, real estate. I'm, I'm in year four now. I'm finally maybe seeing um, some, some repeat business or people that I spoke with years ago are finally kind of maybe getting into the gear of wanting to sell or wanting to buy. And so some of it is just a time thing and being okay with that. Um, it's, it's like, I, I remember that rub when I first got started, it was like, you had no, there's just really not a huge foundation depending on your, your entry into real estate. And so you're having just to, to build from scratch and it seems like you're spinning your wheels maybe, or it feels like you're not necessarily getting anywhere at times, but, um, I saw this illustration once and, and I could be really wrong with this, but like carrots don't have like what you see above the surface of a carrot in the ground is like very little, like there's just not much like head to the carrot. But like when you pull like this giant, you know, you pull a carrot, it's long, it could be thick, you know, like that's sometimes what it feels like in real estate is like, dang, I'm doing like, I'm, you know, like I'm doing all this work. I'm not seeing anything, but sometimes it just takes, takes the work to where you finally kind of see the fruit of, of, of planting the seeds and doing all the labor. So <laughs> Nice. And what's the best thing you've done? Um, so that would that was probably the, the that was probably my answer. The best thing. Um, what was your? It was, it was the best thing. So the, what was the, what was the hardest thing to to, to do to okay. get started? And you said sort of just like Z about the consistency yeah. and right. and having to deal with the fact that you work hard and, and you don't yeah. see the results immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the best thing I would say that the best thing that um, the best thing that I've done is um and i haven't done this well so i'm i'm not i haven't perfected this so give me a little give, a little, give me a little freedom here but um staying in my own lane um we in our in our industry it's so it's so easy to compare it's so easy to um to to look at at somebody else's business and they're crushing it or they're they're top 20 and you're like dang like man like what am i doing wrong or see, things aren't working out for me right now and like there, there's the like, ah, like the self doubt, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but like just staying in your own lane, having blinders at times and just like doing each day what you know um, is going to lead to, to results because real estate really is a numbers game. If you have enough conversations, you get in front of enough people, you're, you're going to see results from it. It's, it's just, I, I really believe in that. Um, but there's moments where you can really get bogged down with, Hey, I don't have enough deals going on, or I don't have any deals going on. And other people are just seemingly like they're in sixth gear and you're like trying to, you've, you've stalled out at the stoplight. And so I think like, for me, um, comparison is the thief of joy, you know, like you've got to really dial into, um, Hey, what, what is your definition of success? Um, what, what's good for you based on your family? Cause I, I'll be honest, like, I don't, I don't need, I don't want to sell 200 houses a year. I don't think I would have my, I would probably get divorced and I don't think I'd ever see my daughter ever, you know? So it's like, I've got to define what, what my lane is, what my, and I think there's something valuable of looking at other people that are doing really well and emulating them and, and picking and, 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 and doing things that they do. I think it's going to help your business, but overall, um, that I've done, I've learned to do is just, stay in your lane, work your thing, you know, do that sort of thing. That's great. That's great. Let's, um, let's let you guys that have uh, tuned in and thanks. we got a ton of people here. Thanks for everybody tuning in. So if you want to ask a question, you can just unmute yourself and, and uh, feel free to ask one of our distinguished panelists or both a question. And if you don't ask any, then I'll start asking more. How about that? So I'll turn it over to the peanut gallery. Well, I have a question for Sean. Okay. Sean, uh, because you did those 27 deals, do you know where they actually came from? And what do. did you do to get those leads? I do. I can track every single one of them. I got like an Excel doc for it. Um, of course you do. 70% se se of my business, 70% um, of my business last year was um, uh, personal organic um, business. So database like COI referral or referrals. Um, I have three deals that of the 70% that were from open, that came from open houses. I'm, I'm a believer in open houses. Um, 
the other 30 percent were were team generated so i, I i'm on uh the hometown's home team with tommy um in the gang and so um 30 percent of my business was also from like team team generated online zillow um different different deals like that um so that was another 30 percent so great thank you yeah yeah man Anybody else have any questions out there? Look at that, everybody's very perplexed. Becky. Yeah. We didn't get that. Can you fire that one out again, please? Nikki would like to know what David Smith has getting it. I think I kind of heard her. She's asking uh, what you do for your Popeyes or like, what do you get? What Popeyes you get? For some reason, your audio, Becky, kind of goes in and out when you're speaking. Yeah, so you who you're asking. Your Popeyes and what, what, what do you, what do you, what's your plan and program with these recent Popeyes? You're oh, oh, this week was uh, Girl Scout cookies. Uh, S'mores was, I want some more of your referrals. Uh, then I had the delight uh, cookies was, I'm delighted for your supportive business. And then uh, next month is uh, Mother's Day. Uh, Mother's Week, sorry, Mother's Day month. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop off like stem flowers to all the mothers because I love flowers. So why not? You're so sensitive. I am. <laughs> That's cool. So do you do them? Do you, do you try to do so many per day, so many per week? Do you do a big bulk uh, pop by thing? What's your plan on getting pop buys out? Uh, my biggest thing is just doing like a massive campaign. It would just, it's more like a, a quarter. Uh, so my biggest, my now, biggest is everyone does um, Thanksgiving. Um, so with insulation and our values, I know we've got the exterior walls of the homes that we build. Hey, Terrell, you got to mute uh, your mic, man. You can hear what you're saying. Go, sorry, Z. Uh, it's okay. Uh, then, so my biggest thing is actually plants right so during the uh, my biggest thing is winter so i drop off poinsettias to all my clients i don't do uh pies but most people do that's cool do you uh what do you do if somebody's not home and you deliver a pop by gift oh i take a picture and i send it to them like immediately i just put it on the and i'll say enjoy or you know thank you for your supportive business if there's anything i can do please feel free to reach out sorry i missed you and that's it Move on. Hey, Dean, I've got a quick question. All right. So with all the different things that, uh, that are out there that you can do in limited hours in a day, how much time do you guys spend that have um, had some success on with, uh, with social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatnot? Sean, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll answer that real quick. Um, so social to me, social media to me is, is, is you go to the, the you go to cook uh, maybe Chick-fil-A or you go to like ice cream shop, you get a Sundae, they put the cherry on top. It makes it look really fancy. You know, like some people take it or don't take it. That, that's what social media is, right? It's just that little extra on top that makes you look better publicly. Um, it, it notifies people that you're doing something because some people just at the end of the day, they, they're like, what do real estate agents, you know, do? And so like you're, being able to kind of brand yourself a little bit, you're, you're, you're topping, you know, you're topping your business with this like red, you know, little <laughs> piece of fruit, you know, that makes it look good. But um, I, I, I'll be honest, I've never had, I've never closed it. I've never had somebody pick up the phone and say like, Sean, oh my gosh, I saw your post on Instagram. And like, I've got to list my house and buy my house next week. You know what I'm saying? Like may, maybe that'll happen. Maybe somebody has had that experience, but um I, I think um, I think it's a great thing to be doing, um, but I, I can't tie any of my business back to it. And so I have heard whether it's I think it was Tom Ferry that like every day spend five, 10 minutes on it, do something, post something, share something, comment on somebody else's life and what they're doing. So it shows that you're engaged, but then move on to the, the lead generating things. I mean, that's kind of, I guess, a little bit of a prospecting lead generation tool, but. That's been my experience. 
And actually, that, that's a helpful follow-up question to that. Between, like, you know, there's Buffini, there's Tom Ferry, Grant Cardone, all these guys out there. It, it, is there is there anyone that you think, I mean, you, I mean, you can't listen to them all, just like you can't do everything. Is, is there any one in particular that you think or you guys think are probably well, gonna, coming out I, of the gate starting out is more helpful? I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you on that. I feel like currently as real estate agents, you're going to be on the road most of the time anyway. So I feel like you will have time to listen to everyone, Buffini, Tom Ferry, all that. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it is education. Um, I probably list personally, I listen to more of Tom Ferry than I do with Brian Buffini uh, just because he's just, he's my, I guess who I like to follow a little bit more. He's a little bit more aggressive. He's a little bit more my style right? But these fundamentals of Brian Buffini is still there uh, that I definitely believe in. So I think you should take 30 minutes out of your day or an hour out of your day and listen to both. It's only an hour. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I'll interject too. I, I don't think there's any harm. I think they're all good. You know, I, I think if you do what, if you, if you have a program and a, and a, a mentor that is a valid you know, has, you know, street cred, if you will. And all those folks do, whether, you know, in, anyone you mentioned does. So whatever works for you, maybe not necessarily the most comfortable, that maybe is a mistake because comfortable doesn't necessarily mean it's going to lead you to success. If you feel good about it and you feel like you can do it, then have in and go, because I think they'll all, they'll all help get you to the promise line. A good question. Yeah, I'll say one thing on that on the the question about like uh, uh, coaches and stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm with these fellows. Like, take 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 what you like, you know, grab grab and go from from what they're saying because they, they both have really valuable things. They different they they have different styles, but they they both have things that are worth worth incorporating in your business. Who else has got something for us? I have a question for you, All right. or for anyone actually. Um, what would you say is your most used, your favorite apps, um, programs, things like that, that you use the most, whether it be free or um, pay for service? Are you talking like social media or are you talking like CRM stuff? CRM or um, money management as far as your receipts, your mileage, that kind of stuff. Any Anything like that, that you really get a benefit from or something that you use on a daily, weekly basis? Uh, I just print, I mean, I have one credit card for all of my business expenses. Um, if you don't have an LLC, I definitely highly recommend doing that. Um, but I'm not a tax advisor, so I can't tell you, but I would suggest that. Um, another, again, and just having one credit card for all your business expenses and that's it, not five credit cards and trying to like juggle it all out. You can't, can't keep track with that. And CRM, I use the Buffini. Sean, how about you? Um, for your mileage, um, you definitely want to be tracking that. You're going to do a whole lot of driving, especially if you're representing buyers, <laughs> uh, I, I have an app, um, it's called iMileage. It's just a mileage tracker. That one's been great for me. It's like 60 bucks a year, but I mean, I mean the deduction you get from that is well worth it. I mileage, uh, it's on the app store. Um, for CRM, I used to use a referral maker, which was through B, uh, Buffini, but um, our, our whole team kind of recently switched over about two years ago to follow up boss. Um, I like that one a whole lot right now. Um, it allows you to text through the app. It has a, its own app so you can, text, email through it. it. It just really kind of assimilates everything. Um, and then as far as like accounting goes, um, definitely recommend the LLC um, just for consolidating things. And then you get some benefits there. Um, I use Mint, mint.com. Uh, it's essentially kind of a budget planning application. Um, but, it also, but it also... Um, it also kind of ties in your bank accounts and it allows you to print statements and then you can kind of provide those to anybody that might need them or when you're doing your taxes, you can easily kind of track through what you're, what you're spending your money on. Thank you. Yeah. 
Both of you guys, I know part of your business strategy has been doing open houses. So uh, in today's very unique market environment, is that still a strategy that you're implementing? And is that something that you would recommend to other people to implement? And, and just how is, how is this uh, seller's market um, impacted your strategy with open houses? Uh, it's it pat, pretty much impact me quite a bit, but at the end of the day, I mean, you still got to hustle. Someone's willing to do an, uh, I'm sure there's a, a house that they're open for you to do. And if someone's doing it from, you know, 11 to two, maybe you should do it from nine to 10 in the morning or three to five in the afternoon. I don't know, but just put it in there. And also there's weekdays, right? There's Monday through Friday. It doesn't have to be Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Yeah, to add to that, um, it, it's definitely frustrating. I had a goal. I got right here. I got like a 2021 goals breakdown. I wanted to do um, 20 open houses over the course of the year. Um, that's almost one every other weekend. And I'm real behind on my goal in regards to, you know, if you don't have your own listings or you're not able to grab listings from, from hometown, it does make it, it, make, it makes it difficult. Um, and, and we're just also kind of piggybacking off of Dean, like we're in a seller's market. And so something lists on Wednesday or Thursday, it might not even make it to the open house unless maybe the review and offers right on like a Monday or Tuesday. So it gets, it gets a little dicey. Um, I've had to pivot my business, like from, from going and, and projecting that, Oh, I could maybe close, you know, three, four five deals from, from open houses. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case. And so I'm having to kind of like pick up, the ground in different areas, but, um, I would definitely say like, continue to per pursue that, like continue to, um, like Big Z said, maybe, maybe find my, maybe find one during the week, um, find one on the weekend, you know, you, you, you definitely don't necessarily have as easy of a time getting them, but, um, it's, it's, it's still definitely worth it. Definitely, definitely worth it. Um, you, you might even be able to reach out to hometown, hometown or RCI and see if you can get some like model home hours. I don't know, um, kind of who's, who's running that ship. Um, but they, they might have opportunities during the week. Um, you could get in a model or spec out. Like just, you just, I mean, you do your notes there, you do your calls there, but you're just in an environment where people might come, come into the room. So that could be like a little caveat if, if that's available. So, um, So, so knowing that we're definitely in a seller's market, how have you had to adjust your skill set from, you know, or, or, and your goals from working with buyers to trying to work with more sellers and take more listings? Uh, and then what advice would you have for the, the, the folks that are tuned in here as far as, um, you know, being on the winning side of this kind of market? I'm going to do, I'm going to pull Becky Parker. I'm actually going to go to door to door starting in May. So I'm excited. The only reason I'm saying May is because Zoe's going to go back to daycare. So uh, I'm going to pull a Becky Parker. It's going to be awesome. Pull a Becky Parker. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, she 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 said she uh, was knocking on doors. She farmed her area. That's how she's became so one of one of the biggest things she's became successful. So no question. There you go. And she's pretty damn successful. <laughs> yeah. Super Becky. All right, so Z's going to pull a Becky Parker. What, what, what kind of rabbit are you going to pull out of the hat? <laughs> Sean? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, yeah, def definitely had to pivot. Um, I mean, here I, 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 I actually posted this the other day and shared it. Like, yeah, like we're in a, we're in a market where it is really, really tough. Um, I would say I've got more buyer clients than I do, you know, listings right now. And so um, I'm, I'm in my car a whole lot more where you would typically write maybe two to three contracts before one got ratified. I feel like I'm writing five to six. It's almost like double the amount of time I'm in the car, the amount of houses I'm showing. Um, I feel like I could write a contract in my sleep. Um, and sometimes they, it does haunt me in my sleep. Um, but um, I think the big thing is just kind of back to that, like just stay in the course. Um, it's an, it, it really is a numbers game. Um, I think if you if you're if you're diligent enough uh, and pursuing it enough, um, it, it, it's just a matter of time before something really clicks. Um, one thing that I haven't had great success with, but so maybe I'll report back on this. But 
um, similar to the, the uh, pulling a Becky Parker um, or, or what Big Z's about to kind of dive into. If you've got a client that is looking in a particular neighborhood, um, go knock on some doors um, or, 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 or find, find some, some addresses and, and, and drop some, some handwritten letters in the mail. Um, I've, got, I've got two listings um, historically that have come from doing that for like a client where you, you drop a letter in the mail and you said, Hey, you know, like Mr. Uh, buyer and seller are looking to move to the neighborhood. We're not finding anything. Have you, have you guys considered it? Um, and, uh, and so fr from that, I've gotten two, two opportunities to represent people. Um, so I think this is kind of a stupid statistic and it kind of bugs me, but, um, Tommy, um, off market Sabiga, that's like his middle, his middle name. Now he sold, I think 24, houses last year off market. Um, and so I think a lot of that is just, he, he does a really good job of connecting with his past clients. Um, and it, he does a good job of connecting dots. And so if you know, you've maybe represented somebody or you've got a friend that's an owner and they've got a particular house and you've got a buyer, that's a good fit potentially for that house in the neighborhood, um, bridge the gap, open the conversation because it, it might lead somewhere. Um, so that, that's a little, a little tidbit on, on potentially working around some of the, the competition. I know a, a topic that a lot of folks have on their mind might be, how do you, how do you educate buyers in today's market? You, you know, um, Sean, you mentioned, you know, you used to write a couple offers and get one accepted. Now it's six, seven, eight, nine offers. And everybody seems to know, I mean, most people know that the market is hot and that it is a seller's market. So how do you keep the, how do you educate the buyer to, so that they know what's getting ready to happen when they get out in the mix? I think if you've been writing nine offers, I think they kind of know what's going on, right? A uh, new buyer, a new buyer. How, when you, when if I, if, if, if Jane and John Doe come in and they want to buy a house and that this is, especially if they're first time home buyers, how do you prepare them for the, 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 the scenario that they're getting ready to walk into. Uh, you have to set the expectations and expect some broken hearts in the beginning, you know, and then just make sure you're, it's a handholding process and making sure they don't leave you. Right. I mean, that's pretty much what it boils down to because next, you know, it, they may get tired of you. You're not, you're not, you're not being energetic. You're not being sympathetic about it. And then they're going to go for somebody else. And next, you know, it, they were only right one offer with them and it goes on a contract. So yeah, because you've broken them in exactly right so you just got to keep them just you know understand right that's it i don't know is there a dialogue that you use when you try to meet people i mean sean what about you what, what do you do to try to you know get people ready for this market yeah i don't i don't i don't know i don't feel like it's ro rocket science I'm, I'm with um i'm with chris i, I feel like um you just got to set the expectation early on um and I think, I, I think, I used to go off the internet. I think, I think a significant thing to do is to, to tag, to tag in, um, as you're seeing houses, um, as you're writing contracts, just to get a pulse on where they are. It, it, and sure, I think you can do a lot on the front end, but you also do a lot in the middle, um, where you're, you're asking questions like, Hey, I asked a client this the other day and we, we got rejected on, on this offer, but before we wrote the offer, we were just at a house and we were standing out front and I was like, Hey, how, how are you guys really feeling? I'm like, just give me, just be, be honest. Like you feeling okay. A little, a little, uh, winded, like how's, how's the tank on, on the house hunt. And, um, and they, they vocalize how they're really doing, you know? And I think that's like a small relational, you're just building rapport. You're showing them that you care and you're in it with them and be like expressive. Like if a deal doesn't get accepted, like, be, be pissed off. Like let, help them see that like, dang, this, this frustrates me too. Um, but I'm ready to get back, back on the horse and, and keep, keep pursuing it. And, um, you know, what, what can we think creatively? Like, you know, and I think you've got to, you've got to adjust within the, within the, within the house search, you, you might have to, to make some adjustments, you know, um, they might have to be okay with if they had a, if they have five things on their must have list and, and there's one thing on there that might be keeping them, keeping them back, then maybe they've got to be okay with 
not having three full bass. Maybe they can do like two, two and a half, you know, like, you know, and, and that might just open up potential other opportunities. But I think just coaching along the way is a big one. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from the, uh, from the viewers, listeners here? All right, I'll, I'll end it with one. So both you guys, and everybody hears some different things when in a, in a scenario like this. But one of the things that I hear, like you, you both talked about consistency in the, in the beginning and you talked about having to do stuff. And, and really the, the, thing that, the thing that keeps you from sometimes doing it is just right here, right? There's no, you've never come to the office and it's been boarded up or you know, somebody's locked your cell phone in a vault. You can't get to it to make the calls or put a, a boot on your car so you can't drive and do your pop buys. The, 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 the opportunity to do those things is always in front of you, yet somehow your, your mindset keeps you from doing it. And I think we've all experienced that. So is there, do you have any tricks? Do you have anything to, what do you do on the days when you don't feel like doing it or how do you how do you stay consistent? How do you get back in the game if you've fallen off track? It's a good question. Have, well, see, I I've guess everyone you. everyone needs to rest, right? You Everybody needs to rest. You've been up and down. I've seen you do it. So right. what what what's call, what causes you to to rebound, and what causes you to even stay in the game? Oh, because I know if I go back to a real job, nine to five, I'm only, I, I can tell you right now, because I'm only high, high school educated, uh, I probably only get paid probably about $15 an hour. Right. That's, that's me. So you would just remind yourself of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I realized I don't like bosses. I really deal. We deal. If no matter what, I'll be in sales. The client that I'm trying to sell to is going to be my boss anyway. Right. And then I'm going to have another boss on top of me of that. Right. We are already helping sellers and buyers that are currently our bosses anyway, more or less. So why not make them happy? So while still, while we're talking to you, Z, so if, if, if somebody out here is found the, that they may be falling off the track, they haven't done, they're like Sean, they haven't done 17 pop buys this week. Not that he's the <laughs> only one. I sure haven't. But if, if somebody just, you know, we, we can look at ourselves and say, you know what, maybe, maybe I haven't done in the last 10, 14, 30, whatever days, I haven't done what I'm supposed to do. What, what would you tell them to get them on track? Uh, that's, hard. that's hard for me to say because I think everyone has to go through. I'm a person that has to go through the experience because I'm like, who, who do you, what do you know? Right. And I think I go through hard times with that. Right. And then once you go through it, you're like, oh, I don't want to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes with you, I, I know that my, my, my method with you sometimes is to be somewhat empathetic, although maybe not always, but ultimately it's my advice to you. And I don't think I've ever said it this way is like, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> it's now, true. Because, because I know that you don't want to go back to what you were before. I know that you're proud of where you are right now and that, that you have incredible potential, but if you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to reach any of these goals if you don't have some level of consistency and, and knowing that we don't, no one is 100% consistent, right? Right. I'll never forget, uh, Dean is, it was like th four, three or four years ago. I had uh, six deals under contract. I was on cloud nine. It was awesome. Within a week and a half, all of them fell apart. All of them, all six. I mean, I was heartbroken, right? And you just saw it. And I'm like, I'm like in tears in front of you. And I'm like, I don't even know what to do. And you're like, all right, uh, start making some phone calls. I'm like, all right, I guess that's what I got to do. <laughs> and that's what you got to do. You know, I mean, there's no, there's no other way to put it, you know? Yeah. Good. So that's it. Good deal. Sean, how about you? So what, what do you do? The chips, maybe the chips are down. You haven't done what you're supposed to do. How do you get back in the game? Oh man. Um, Dean, I feel like, well, one, I feel like we're, we're also like mo most people that are getting into real estate or pursuing real estate. Like we're, we're kind of pioneers a little bit. Like we have that, that extra gear where we just, 
we really fire, we try to fire, we, we, we want to be firing all the time. And there's just moments where you're not right. And so I think just realizing that like, man, there are going to be some days where I just don't want to go into the office. I, I don't want to make my calls. Like I just, I don't want to, you know? And so I think like just calling, <laughs> calling it what it is. Um, and also just giving yourself some like room, room for error, room for, for making mistakes, room for like, it's okay. We're you, you, like, like literally like at the end of the day, you're, you're human. Sometimes things just aren't quite quick. but I think what has helped me, um, whether it's, it's been a couple days or a couple weeks and I feel like I'm just off track, set the precedent, like set the bottom line every day I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And literally like be okay if you've done X, Y, Z, let's say that like, literally, like if your X, Y, Z is I'm going to do five calls, two notes, two or three notes and one pop by, I think I, I was in like a, a infinity class or something with Kevin Long. And I think he mentioned something like that one day. That's like when he was getting into the business, that was his five, three, one or five, two, one. Like if that's your number, that's like the bottom line every day, I'm going to do this. Then the on the, then just do that one thing. And literally it, that, pro- that whole process could be like less than you could make five calls and your notes and then go to a pop by and maybe you might even if you started at nine o'clock you might be done by like 10 30 11 you know but like if you just don't have the if you don't have the 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 gumption that day if you don't have the energy if it's just if it's not if you're not feeling propelled like just 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 go do go do something else with your life that day but you can still like feel confident because no i sat down and i did i did the the xyz i did the one thing because if you do, I, I broke down my 20, 2021 goals breakdown. Like if I do X amount of calls, um, if I do six calls a day at the end of the year, that's 1,440 phone calls. That's a lot of freaking phone calls. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do 1,440 phone calls today on Thursday, April 15th. But if I did six calls every day over the course of 365 days, that's going to be a lot of phone calls. And we know in real estate, it's a numbers game. The more calls you make, the more times you're having the conversations, the more opportunity you're going to have to potentially get it, get, it, get something rock and roll. And so I think that's what I keep coming back to is like, dude, I drop the ball and fumble and stumble my way through most of my life and most of my job. Um, but if I can just do the X, Y, Z, um, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep the, the ship going. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. It's yeah. so like the compounding effect, you know. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, you you do you do you go one day to the gym. Well, that's good, but you know, don't take off your shirt and expect to be yoked after that. Right. Uh, right. But you know, you go for six months, and next thing you know, that hey, that may be what is that a bicep coming out there or something? You know, so <laughs> pretty good. And the same thing here. You you do the, the you do the activities, and then all right. of a sudden it's like, hey, what is that a deal? That, that's my name on the on the board in the office. And then right, I, right, right, right. And I think being okay, like, I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but I think being okay with like, just doing your, doing your thing, you know, like whatever your XYZ is, if you did that that day, you won, you won the day, you yeah. know? And then, but again, you define your XYZ, but like do your XYZ, you won the day. So when you, when you, when your head hits the pillow at night, because there's so many things in the realtor, you can always be doing something. You can always do this. You can always be here, be there. But like, no, I did my thing today. So yeah, that's great. Great advice. Well, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. You know, the, the whole deal when, when, when Mike and, and Bonnie Chenault start, started this whole deal, you know, that they, they came up with one rule and it's posted in all of our offices, treat people the way you want to be treated. Right. And one of the things that I feel like has, has carried on is that you got guys like Big Z and like Sean that are willing, that are busy and willing to give their time to help other people succeed. And that's what I, I mean, that just, that, that makes, that's the foundation of what makes our company such a great place to work. So thank you guys. When, when the rest of you have an opportunity to, to turn around and give somebody a hand, please do that. So anyway, uh, enough of that. So thank you for your time. You guys have a great day. And if you, uh, if you want to reach out to these guys offline, I'm sure they, they'd, uh, they'd find time to talk to you. So. Yeah, would love to. Thanks, guys. Everyone. Thanks, Dean. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, y'all. All right.